So thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here this morning. You know, Garrett was talking about his small town uh, or smaller town in uh, uh, Missouri here, and I, I always am reminded of uh, when I was a director of ag, I hail from a small town too. Sumner is a population of about 250 people, and um, our high school class uh, uh, that my wife and I graduated from had 22 people, the high school class that my uh, children, who triplets who are now 27, graduated from, was 16. So it's a, a very small town, and it took three towns to make those 16 students. But nonetheless, uh, as director, I was able to go home most weekends. And being able to go home, I went back to Sumner, and I'd be, find myself at the co-op or in at Tubbs Pub. And while I was there, that was always a, you know, great chance for uh, people to give me a weekly performance review because those uh, people back in Sumner that watched me grow up that knew all the dirty things I'd done uh, in Sunday school and Bible school and all those other places uh, weren't much impressed with any title I, ha I had then or have now but they were sure concerned of whether or not I was doing the right thing by them and uh, but what that made me realize is that what I was doing made a difference to people in a very small town in a very rural area of our United States. And so that's something that as I move to USDA, I carry with me as well. That the decisions I make and the, the paths that I, uh, I try to guide USDA towards uh, make a difference and affect people in small towns all across our United States. And so it's important that we do those um, uh, carefully, that we uh, seek to gain consensus, we seek to work uh, with partners across the board to be able to be successful in those efforts. So hopefully the comments that I make this morning about where we're headed with um, animal disease traceability uh, reflect that uh, uh, those roots in small town America, those roots that I have in the beef industry uh, in, a, in a desire to be able to move us forward. This, uh, we have with us this morning, Dr. Shear is going to speak after me. I, he has the enviable task. I, I've been in this role too many times. Dr. Shear, the governor, got up and spoke. The secretary gets up and spoke, speaks, and then you're left to whatever's left over, which you have no idea what that, that is going to be. You've got to clean up afterwards. So just throw those comments you had prepared away because you'll probably not be able to use them anyway. Uh, but uh, so we also have uh, Aaron Scott, uh, Sarah Tomlinson, and Kim uh, Kirkham here today that I'm aware of from USDA. And so uh, they're uh, around to be able to support our cause. They've also been working on this cause uh, for a long time as well. You know, this uh, represents animal disease traceability. When I came to USDA, this was one of the goals that I set my, for myself to be able to make a difference or have an impact on how we were able to move forward in this realm and how uh, I wanted to work with the beef industry to be able to move the beef industry forward in a way they felt good about and that they could support as, as we move forward. And I'm very grateful for the role that organizations like NIAA play in uh, the work that you've done up to this point, the work that you've done in going back home and communicating and raising awareness for uh, a number of years and how you've worked together with um, uh, USDA. One of the things that's important is that we uh, work together to bring federal, state, and industry together, and I think you've played a, a major role in that. Uh, the animal disease uh, traceability working group that uh, is housed here has been a very important part of that process. At USDA, uh, we believe and the secretary b believes very strongly that uh, the agriculture industry in America wants a group of people that, uh, uh, and a government that works for them, listens to them, and we hope that uh, what we're moving forward with on ADT represents that. I believe that uh, safeguarding the health and economic well-being of the livestock industry is one of the core responsibilities that livestock producers expect out of USDA APHIS. And I think that uh, animal disease traceability plays a key role in being able to deliver on that expectation uh, for producers. And so we need to work together to have an efficient system, an effective system, 
and a, a system that they view as customer friendly because those are the three tenets that the Secretary has set forth for everything we do in USDA to represent that effective, efficient, and cu customer friendly federal government. And so uh, we want to, uh, as we said before, it's going to take uh, um, transparency, consistency, objectivity, and working together to achieve those. Uh, the Farm Bill is, uh, you know, something that we had hoped that maybe by now we, we, there was light at the end of the tunnel. I think there is light at the end of the tunnel. It's just a little bit farther down the road than we, uh, we hoped it would be. Uh, Congress needs to act by the end of this month in order to uh, replace the Farm Bill that we have in place. So it would appear that with everything else uh, going on at, in Washington, D.C. right now, that that probably isn't going to happen. So uh, we'll uh, work at USDA to uh, work with Congress to understand whether or not they're going to do extension, and if they don't do an extension right away, what that means to the programs to be able to continue to deliver for agriculture across the board. But within the Farm Bill right now, there are aspects that very much refer to disease traceability and the the issues and concerns that the livestock industry has raised over the last year or so with uh, managing diseases. And so we uh, continue to uh, be partners with answering and providing technical assist assistance in that discussion. The House and Senate bills are very different in how they've approached it. And so uh, we look forward to seeing what that final outcome is as, as how it uh, helps advise USDA to move forward. But in the meantime, I think it's important that we start moving forward either way. And so uh, we uh, now uh, you know, are going to uh, look at how we, uh, after significant discussion and s significant compromises over the years, I think we're ready to uh, move forward with the industry on a way to how we best strengthen our ADT capabilities and framework. And the um, federal policy for how we've approached ADT has been amended several times over the last decade or decade and a half. And uh, it's always revolved around um, stakeholder feedback and support that the industries have for uh, animal disease traceability. And as we approach this iteration of federal government policy or the leadership that we can provide, I think we have uh, a bright prospect in the fact that I, I see and I've heard many other people refer to the momentum that seems to be building within the industry, especially within the cattle industry, to moving forward with a better system to provide traceability. So we look forward to working with you on that. Uh, the, and that we need to have a, a system that uh, uh, also enhances emergency preparedness and response because the discussion has started to become not if we have a, uh, a animal disease outbreak, but when. And so with that in the mindset and how that affects the economic viability of individual farmers and ranchers, I think that provides us a, a great opportunity. You know, in the event that we do have an animal disease, finding sick and exposed animal is going to be key to control and eradication. And I think that is where time is going to matter very much. And with the hand system or the system we have in place today, many times trace outs take weeks or months to accomplish. It's not hours or days. And so if we start thinking about a highly infectious or rapidly spreading disease, weeks or months has a dire economic consequences. And so that's why as we move forward and uh, think about uh, putting in place an electronic system that is able to work with industry, work with uh, industry partners, work with producers to be able to maintain our existing markets, assure those partners that uh, we have a traceability system in place is very important. And many people talk about how would we preserve and talk about regionalization as an important component to be able to preserve our marketplace. Being able to control and contain and establish the fact that we can have a region that is infected that we're working in and other regions of the country that 
we uh, are not worried about that disease having spread to is very important. So that is key to uh, uh, some of the very uh, reasons why we need to form move forward with animal disease traceability. So with that in mind, there's four goals that we're going to focus on uh, here at USDA. And I don't think these have been a secret. I've been talking about them uh, since I, maybe my first appearance at, um, at NCBA convention last January and when I met, uh, when I was here before you, when you met in Denver uh, earlier this year and several other tops, talks along the way. But we want to advance the electronic sharing of data as needed to protect animal health. And we want that sharing to be a, the ability to provide that sharing between federal, state, animal health officials, veterinarians, and the industry. And so that doesn't mean that we at USDA want to have access to that information all the time. We don't want to store that information, but we want to have the ability to access that information when we need to access that. We want to, the, the number two would be when we want industry to adopt standard practices for the use of electronic ID uh, as a standard practice to use electronic ID tags in animals that need to be moved uh, with individual identification versus group lot identification. And uh, we plan to uh, help assist in that by uh, putting forward a plan to participate in the initial cost of some of those tags as we move forward getting producers used to uh, to using those on their own operations across our country. Three, we want to enhance the overall ability to track animals from birth to slaughter in a matter where we connect data points. And initially, uh, it would just, uh, a book-in system would be our initial goal, but there are different times and different sightings along the way when animals cross uh, state borders uh, and uh, health certificates uh, track the or document the movement of those cattle that we may be able to start putting some additional data points uh, in that traceability system to help us uh, form a more complete system and help us be able to track animal diseases across our country. And then four, we want to evaluate, elevate the discussion with states and industry to work toward a system where animal health certificates are electronically transmitted from private veterinarians to state health officials. And I think this is a, a key part of uh, the ability to be able to, to have those movements of animals transfer at the same time those animals have moved. Many of you have heard about and heard me talk about my experience as a director of a state department of agriculture that was involved with the state veterinarian that was housed within the Department of Agriculture in Nebraska. And many times uh, we would find that we, uh, health certificates would show up one, two, sometimes even three or more months after the animals had moved into our state. And as you know, that isn't an effective way to be able to manage a disease outbreak if you don't find uh, out animals have moved into your state until three months after they sh have shown up on the scene. So we need to figure out how we work to be able to have a system that works for those local veterinarians that uh, is able to communicate up through the system to you as state veterinarians, those of you that serve in that role as animal health officials to be able to know and understand how animals are moving in and out of your state. And uh, so these goals uh, represent, I think, uh, the goals that the Animal Disease Traceability Working Group have identified. They very much represent a condensed version of the 14 points that we came out with last year after the nine different listening sessions across the United States. So I think they build on the consensus that has been discussed and the momentum that has uh, ha have, have come out of those. I think as you uh, uh, listen to Jack, he's going to talk about some details under each one of those points. But I think one of the details that uh, is important to listen to is that uh, we're not going to define the technologies. The industry is going to work together to define those technologies because we know that certain segments of different industries want to use different technologies and they need to use different technologies to be able to uh, move at the speed of commerce that happens at their location. 
the technology, the rate of commerce at the shoot site in Sumner, Nebraska is different than the speed of commerce at a large livestock auction market in Tennessee or Missouri. And so those are, are different needs uh, completely than uh, uh, independent of each other. And so they, we need to be able to, to evaluate that we need information in the event of an animal disease outbreak and we don't uh, care where that information comes from. If you can run a Big Chief uh, tablet at the speed of commerce and get us the information we want when we want it, uh, more power to you, but I don't think that's going to work. But uh, it's still uh, choice is going to be up to the industry and up to the components of the industry to decide uh, what they uh, want to work with. And uh, so as we move forward here, we are going to not uh, lose focus on some of our other key responsibilities at USDA APHIS. And that's that core responsibility that we still have for prevention, surveillance, outreach, preparedness, infrastructure, and rapid response. And so we will still be working very much with a focus on delivering those to all segments of the livestock industry. And that's even uh, an important responsibility we have within the plant industry as well that we will continue to focus on. Um, by elevating traceability, we think this is a key component of many of those other uh, responsibilities we have for us to be able to successfully uh, develop, uh, to deliver on those, those responsibilities, especially rapid response. And uh, you know, as we work together, uh, we want to work with many partners. Right now we're working with the Kansas Department of Agriculture on, and the state's livestock industry and many partners within that industry on the Cattle Trace pro Pilot Project. And that's a project that is modeling what a national system might look like and how information might be transferred among many different segments of the livestock industry. We look forward as that uh, project uh, continues to operate and, and conclude later this fall to some of the lessons we can learn from that project. And we're looking forward to be able to implement maybe uh, traceability projects uh, 2.0 and 3.0 down the road with other states and other industry partners to be able to incorporate uh, information or experiences or uh, build on what we've learned from the Kansas project. And so if you're interested down in uh, version 2.0 and helping us uh, learn more and helping us take these experiences to producers. I think the other thing that uh, we're wanting, wanting to take advantage of is uh, more exercising, more preparedness and understanding just exactly what happens in the event an, of an animal disease outbreak. I think that this is something that many producers at the very uh, uh, local level need to understand because I think as they understand how uh, quickly a disease can spread and how many different uh, uh, problems we can have with being able to identify, control, and contain, I think we will build uh, moment, mo even more momentum ar around cooperation and more understanding around the need for where we're headed. So as we move forward and Dr. Shear uh, uh, works with you and the rest of USDA uh, to build partnerships, the partnerships are a very key part of this. Uh, we, uh, and it's uh, more than NIAA, it's breed associations, it's different segments of the livestock industry. It's the different partners that help us move our production from individual cow-calf farms and uh, ranches to feedlots and backgrounders and eventually uh, to packing plants and to the consumer to be able to build confidence in that system. Uh, because I think in, at the end of the day, this is a key component to us continuing our ability to be uh, um, have consumer confidence, not only here in the U.S., but internationally, and the opportunity for us to continue to grow the opportunities within the livestock industry to be suppliers uh, to uh, the world 
that we live in today. So thank you very much.